Well, good evening and thank you once again for joining me in this presentation. I'm really excited about this one. Um, and uh, as you can see on the screen, I've called it uh, Goal Setting 101 because we want to get into this uh, and talk to you. I want to get into this and talk to you about how you can go about setting goals because as we get into this, you're going to realize that um, if you learn how to do this and you practice these things, it's definitely going to enhance your life. And it's in line with the other webinars that I've done. If you haven't had an opportunity, we invite you to contact us and let us know. We'll be more than happy to send the links out to those missed webinars in your case if you have. Uh, we talked about detoxifying the body. Last one, we talked about uh, how we self-destruct and self-sabotage ourselves. This one is about goal setting. And the one following is going to be about exercise. Then I'm gonna be talking about intermittent fasting. Uh, then we'll be talking about uh, sleep. We'll be talking about chocolate, the different types of chocolate. And we're gonna be talking about also in a session, how to uh, detoxify your home now that you've detoxified your body. So I'm looking forward to those things. It's going to be very, very exciting, and I am anxious to do those for you. So without any further ado, and if you do have any questions during this time, you make sure you just raise your hand and, uh, and we'll go from there, okay? So again, thank you so much for joining me, and uh, we'll go ahead and continue with the presentation. So goal setting 101 then. And as I said a few moments ago, I wanted to welcome you to the class and thank you for allowing me to share this information with you this evening. So as we get into it, I want to talk to you here about the importance of goal setting. Uh, you know, in, according to Webster, a goal is defined as uh, the result or the achievement toward which an effort is directed. What it simply, if I may, you know, restate that, it just simply means accomplishing uh, something that you wanted to uh, to do, you wanted to accomplish, you just have achieved that. The decision now to set goals is really, really very important. It's a very important decision, and it's going to impact your life, my life, in more ways than we really uh, can imagine or are aware of at the time. Now, when we do set goals, there's there's about five areas of our life that we're that's going to be affected when we do set goals one when we set goals it's going to really provide a sharp sense of focus you're going to be your attention is going to be directed toward whatever it is that you're you're wanting to accomplish what you're wanting to achieve uh, another thing that's going to happen is when you set a goal it's going to allow you to measure your progress and that's really really important because the goal is where you want to end up. And where you are at the time that you decide to set the goal is where you're starting. And as you put into play or into action those things to achieve that goal, you're going to be able to measure where you were, how far you've gotten, and how little you need to continue to go in order to achieve your goal. So it's really important in its ability to uh, uh, help you to measure your progress. And progress is a very important motivator, if you will. And when you set goals, it also, you, you by doing so, you block out the distractions and it provides you really productive boundaries because now you're focused. You know, you're looking at this one thing, whatever it might be, and uh, you're, you're putting boundaries around you, whether you see them or not, whether they're tangible or not, uh, because you, you have a certain time limit, you have a certain time frame, you have a certain um, uh, uh, resources that you're going to be, use, be using, whatever that may be, and it blocks out any distractions that you might be having because you're focused, as I said a few moments ago. When you set a goal too, it combats procrastination. And boy, that's one of the things that plagues most individuals is uh, procrastination. You know, we, we, we continually put things off and put things off, but when you set a goal out in front of you, as we'll talk about in a few moments, it uh, removes that tendency to procrastinate. And also when you set a goal, it motivates you. Yeah, it gives you purpose, renewed purpose, a renewed focus. It, uh, and a sense of achievement here. So we're gonna look at how this works here. 
because what we want to do is find out how we can provide a sharp sense of focus. When you set a goal for yourself, what you're doing is inherently, see, you have a, uh, uh, an end game, as they usually say now, that's in mind, or a due date, if you will, that, that shifts your behavior and your thoughts. Because all of a sudden now, with this, you begin to take certain steps to get what you want, and in doing so, you're going to gradually pick up momentum. Because what happens here, as you set it in motion, you realize that now you're getting closer and closer and closer to achieving that goal. And as you do it, it you, you pick up momentum there. Uh, the closer you get, the the more urgent it becomes, or the more excited you get, or uh, the sooner you want to achieve it. Even though you may want to do it by Friday, or we'll just say hypothetically you want to achieve something by Friday, if you get this work accomplished and done, and uh, the, the pieces all in place, you get, you get excited about it, and you finish it, maybe you, you get so excited about it your momentum is that which carries you as to the extent wherein you finish it like two days earlier it's really really exciting and you know it can be addictive once you do one thing well you want to do another because you it confirms to you that you can do these things it's like uh having a list of things to do and when you set that goal, you just knock them off one after the other after the other. You kind of get into a zone, if you will. And as you progress and you get closer to accomplishing your goal, your brain actually releases a chemical. This is really, really interesting. As I teach doctors and that about the, the, the neurotransmitters of the brain, when we set goals, your body creates, uh, your brain creates a neurotransmitter. It's released. It's called dopamine. And it's a substance that controls your reward centers or your pleasure centers, I should say, that are in the brain and it motivates you to take further steps to achieve a reward. And in your case, or in this case, it would be, you know, um, achieving that goal. So it's, it's a feel good neurotransmitter, if you will. So how does goal setting allow you to measure your progress? Because I said a few moments ago that when you do that, you can go ahead and measure the progress you're making, the gains that you're achieving. Well, when you're setting a goal, you're going to have to develop a plan, right? And, and when you put that plan down, then you abide by that plan in order to get whatever it is you want. And as you work your plan, as you take the steps that you've listed out one after the other, you're going to notice gradual progress along the way. So we'll say hypothetically, again, you have a goal and it's going to require in your estimation, seven things you're gonna to have to do to get it. And as you knock off the, the first, you take the first step, you complete it, and you move on to the second step, you move on to the third step, and so on and so forth, you're gonna see that, gra that progress along the way because now you're up to the fifth step and the sixth step, and boy, that momentum, as I, as I mentioned a few moments ago, is just carrying you, and you just complete that goal. And when you're measuring your gradual progress, what it does, it allows you to see how far you've come. And this can be incredibly motivating and it's encouraging. And, and by, by being motivated and encouraged, it's gonna keep you on track because you're gonna see, you're gonna sense success in the near future. And as you set your goals and you progress in, in, in obtaining that goal, you're gonna learn various methods of taking the proper steps to get you what you want. And, and likewise, when you're measuring your progress, it's also going to permit you to, to make the, uh, the necessary alterations, you know, little tweaks along the way if you feel like you're getting off course. So the ability to measure your progress really is a skill. And the more you do it, the better at it you're going to become. And you're going to be able to fine tune it and tweak it and uh, sooner or later, as you continue to do that, every time you get a goal, it's going to become easier and easier to figure out the steps you're going to need to take, the plan you're going to need to develop, and, and more importantly, it's going to increase the ease with which you're going to be able to achieve or accomplish your goal. So how then, if we're setting these goals, how do we block the distractions and how do we provide these boundaries that I alluded to earlier? 
Well, the ability to block the distractions, it's not only going to help you to achieve your goal sooner, but it's also going to help you to develop that self-discipline, which is a critical life skill that's going to actually spill over into a lot of different areas. So when you have that, that due date in mind, when you have that end in sight in your mind, and you're determined to get to the finish line, it becomes increasingly easier to avoid anything that's gonna steer you off course. And I'm telling you, they're out there, they're out there plentifully, all kinds of distractions, all kinds of other things that could take you off course and could cause you to, uh, to be distra distracted long enough and so long, in fact, that you forget what you were attempting to do. And for those that, that struggle, with, uh, with blocking the distractions, one uh, on your quest to goal achievement, let, let me share with you some helpful tips that I found were beneficial even in, in my life. You wanna focus on two or three very important tasks. That's what you wanna do that, that are gonna propel you in the direction of your goal. You don't wanna to try to take on too much at once because if you do, I assure you, it can easily overwhelm you. You also, what you wanna do is focus on completing work in segments. So instead of attempting uh, to tackle one huge project at once, you wanna break it down into bits. You know, you wanna just section it out, if you will, because distraction is often comes when you're not 100% focused on the task at hand. But if you break it down into little segments, you can focus on that little segment, get it done. Then you go on to the next and get it done. And then you move to the next one. Now, I'm not saying that you have to do this all in one sitting. It's like constructing a house, if you will. Your goal is to build this house. And uh, you know, you've got to lay a foundation. You got to put up the walls or the frame. Then you got to put on the roof. And then you got to put, uh, you got to fill in the walls and you got to put the electrical and the plumbing and whatnot. Well, when you're doing this, you, you got your goal, you got your house that you want to complete by a certain date, within four months. So we'll say, and then what you're going to do is lay the foundation. That's the first thing. You've got to work on laying the foundation. You got it done, great. You can see your house coming together. Then the next thing you do at the next time or the next opportunity you have to work, you're going to put up the frame and you're going to have that. Now it's beginning to look more like a house. See, so you get that that idea here, you're staying focused and on task by doing this little bit by little bit. And you also have your boundaries here. And the ability to place the boundaries in our life, it's really a paramount skill. We've got to have boundaries in our life in order to help ourselves to achieve our goals. Because the goals are gonna provide the boundaries by incentivizing us so that we know when to say no. See, sometimes people get so overwhelmed and carried away with trying to do everything all at once that they end up burning themselves out. You know, they just become overwhelmed with it. And the burnout is the ultimate enemy to, uh, to achieving your goal or, or attaining what it is that you're wanting to achieve. See, because we try to do too much too quickly and we're getting sidetracked by other things and then we're going back and trying to continue the work we just simply burn out. And some people really do have a fear of boundaries and they feel as though the boundaries are gonna prevent them from accomplishing their goals. But you know, in reality, boundaries do exactly the opposite, see? Because they keep us focused, they keep us within a time frame, they keep us um, committed to the task at hand. And um, you know, this is a boundary might be like this, I, I wanna read, We'll say I want to read a book, right? And what I want to do is I want to set up boundaries. So I'm going to, I know that the day is going to be busy. There's going to be phone calls. There's going to be other things that I need to get done. But this is the boundary I'm going to set. Every morning for after I've gotten up and eaten breakfast, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a boundary of 30 minutes. I'm going to allocate 30 minutes here of my day where I won't answer the phone, I won't take any calls, I won't be distracted by going to emails or whatever it might be, no other distractions, not watching the TV, but for 30 solid minutes, I'm gonna open up that book 
and I'm going to read for 30 minutes. Or I can say it this way. I'm going to set aside a period of time. It's going to be 30 minutes. And within the 30 minutes, I promise to read two chapters. So instead of a time limit, I'm going to be reading chapters. And if I should finish reading two chapters before the 30 minutes are up, then I'm done. And I can use that extra time to go ahead and do whatever else I want to do. But I, I know and I am, I, I'm sure you're getting the idea here where we're setting those boundaries, see, so that we're not interrupted by other things that is going on. So how then do we combat procrastination? Because now, later, tomorrow, boy, procrastination is a plight that, that many people struggle with in all aspects of their lives. And thankfully, when we set goals effectively and efficiently, we can, we can easily combat this ailment. Because when you set goals and you're striving towards achieving them innately, it increases your willpower. You're getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And mighty willpower combined with, a, with a, a, an end date or an end game or a final date in mind, it makes staying the course and not wasting time so much easier. And the best remedies for procrastination are basically motivation. You're motivated to get it done combined with your willpower. See, and speaking of motivation, <laughs> with a nice segue there, um, how do we do that? How do we motivate ourselves to do this? Well, when we're setting goals, we are innately, again, it's something from within, we are innately exciting. And, uh, you know, when you set the goals, you get excited about it because, you know, you're looking at something you're, you're going to achieve, you're going to accomplish. And motivationally well, as well, it's going to give you something to strive towards and to achieve. It gives you purpose. You know, there's so many people out there that um, they, they lose their purpose in life. They, they're not motivated to do anything because they feel as though, well, well, I'm retired now. I've done this. I've done that. I'm, and they just, uh, honest to goodness, the, their life almost becomes deflated. And what you want to do is you want to you want to set goals in your life because it's 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 causing you to strive to work toward achieving something you know this sense of accomplishment that that drive the energy the passion that comes with setting and achieving goals are what gives us the strength to avoid the distractions and the obstacles and it helps us to overcome the difficulties and we actually stay the course. When you're motivated, it also means you're taking action and you're not quitting, you're not giving up, not until you're done, not until you've achieved your goal. So all in all, setting goals is inherently motivational because it compels us to get to the finish line. That's what you wanna do. Oh my goodness. And the closer you get, I think that, that inner strength, just it just moves you to, to continue to go and not to give up, see? Um, because you'll find out that you're responsible for setting your goals. You become responsible. When you're setting a goal, yeah, you get that feeling within you, it's really challenging. And, and when you do that, you have one or, two, one or two options that are before you. Either you can put in the work and to set and achieve that goal, or you don't put in the work to set and achieve your goal. So, you know, and, but I got to tell you that each option comes with consequences, whether they be good or bad. But sadly, most people go for option number two because it's comfortable. It's easy. See, and it's filled with excuses. That's the one where you don't put in the work to, uh, to set and achieve your goal and, and you don't achieve your goal. But, you know, the fact the fact is this, the fact that you're here on this, with me on this webinar, uh, makes me think that you want to go for option number one, as much as I want you to. I really want to see you succeed. That's uh, something that I have in, in my practice with the patients that come in. I have a goal for that individual, and, and, and allow me to explain. My goal is to help any individual, every individual, 
despite and regardless of whatever the named condition is that they come into my office with. When they come into the clinic, you know, they might have a cold, another person comes in with a sprained ankle, another, another one comes in with a broken uh, forearm, another one may come in with a diagnosis of cancer, another one may come in with uh, irritable bowel disease. And the point I'm trying to make is it doesn't matter who they are, what they have, or what they, what they present with. My goal for every single one of them is to help them to achieve the best performance of their life, right? Now, uh, I've got to see and sense that the patient that's in front of me has the same goal, that he or she also wants to achieve the best performance of their life. Because if they do, if they work with me, if we're working together, we can go ahead and do that because now we're, we're setting, we have this challenge and we have this pursuit, this goal in mind, we join our forces together and we can work and, and achieve these goals. Because if I'm the only one that wants to achieve that goal, understand, and, and they don't want to, they, they really don't want to, they're not, they, they won't commit to it and whatnot, then honestly, they're not going to achieve it. They're not gonna get any better because I can't do it for them. See, I'm just a facilitator. But as I said, the fact that you're here already uh, and, and makes me believe that you really want to work and achieve any and every goal in your life. So as we go further, I'm going to share creative and strategic, strategic excuse me, tips that you can use that will help you to successfully set and attain your goals. So what we're going to be doing now is um, we're going to be going into the most common mistakes then. In order to do that, we're going to look at some of the most common mistakes that cause people to fail or fall short when they're setting and working to achieve their goals, right? So why do people often fall short or they fall short when they're working to achieve their goals? Well, according to a, some research that was done, the most common reasons that people often fail or fall short when they're working to achieve their goals are, and this is not in any particular order, just randomly here, but these are the most common reasons. One is that their goals are not specific enough. See, you got to have, according to the experts, you, you should be setting what, what we call SMART goals. That's an acronym here that I'm going to share with you, SMART goals, S-M-A-R-T goals. That's the acronym here. This stands for, the S stands for specific. They've got to be specific goals. The M stands for measurable. Remember, as I, as I talked about earlier, that you've got to be able to measure your progress. They've got to, the A, they've got to be achievable. They've got to be realistic goals, see, that we can achieve, that we can accomplish. The R stands for reliable. And the T stands for time framed, that we've got to have a time frame. Those are the boundaries, see? We've got to have, a, we can't just have an open end. Well, someday I hope to. That, that's not good. We have to have a time frame. So for instance, all right, right? Um, you know, uh, I, I want to make a lot of money, right? Well, that's a, that's a great goal, but it's not a good one. It's not a good goal. What, you gotta, what you've got to do with that example is say, I want to earn, we'll say $50,000 by the end of the year. That would be much better. That would be specific, see? Instead of saying, I just want to make more money, well, that's too ambiguous. We've got to have something that's specific. I want to earn 50000 see? Because then, and by the year's end, not only are you setting an achievable amount or a time frame or a specific amount, I should say, but you're also setting a specific time in which to do it. And then also people often procrastinate. This is another reason why people fall short or fail to achieve their goals because they, they procrastinate. When you set a goal for yourself, it's really, really important to start working towards that goal immediately, see? Because so many people get sidetracked or they put the work off. That's not what you want to do because that's the best recipe for failure. 
as the Bible teaches, today is the day and now is the acceptable time. So as soon as you determine what that goal is and the time frame in which you want to do it, you start working on it immediately. All right. Then another reason is that they that the critics say and the naysayers, they or people, the reason they fail is because they say there's too many people that are critics, you know, uh, or the naysayers, and they allow those individuals to get to them. You know, there's always going to be naysayers, you know, those, oh, you'll never be able to, oh, you can't do that. Are you kidding me? You're not going to be able to do that or get real. I mean, all of these sayings that they throw your way, and there are those that doubt your abilities to uh, successfully execute your plans. What you've got to do is you have to make a decision to rise above the criticism of other individuals, and you got to stick with what you believe in. This is often, and I realize that it's often easier said than done, but in the end, it comes down to making the choice and exercising or executing that choice with your willpower. See, it is often easier said than done, but the bottom line is it can be, and you, it can be done, and you're the one that can do it. Or another reason why people fail in, in accomplishing their goals is because they keep poor company. You know, did you know that the average, that, that actually you're the average of the five people you associate with most often? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I'm going to let you chew on that one and write it down and think about it. But the, it, it really is. You and I are the average of the five people that we associate with most often. It's really a startling revel rev uh, revelation there, but it's it it's really quite profound. So when you're when you're striving towards achieving a goal, what you've got to do is you you need to surround yourself with like-minded people who will encourage you, and and because the poor company is going to hold you back. In, in the Bible, it says that that bad company corrupts good morals. Well, not only does it corrupt good morals, but that bad company will, will distract you, will cause you to procrastinate, or it will convince you that you can't do whatever it is you're setting out to do. And surrounding yourself with the right people, it's going gonna, it's gonna to maximize your potential for being successful. So that's one thing I would encourage you to do. When you set your goal, you, you, you want to surround yourself with people who are your, um, your um, cheerleaders, so to speak. They're in your corner. They're going to help you to do it, see? They're going to they're gonna motivate you onward and upward. Because as Abdul Kalim said, to succeed in your mission, you must, you must have single-minded devotion to achieving your goal. Thank you very much for that, Abdul. So, what are some of your, some great creative ways to accomplish your goals? I'm glad you asked that question because one, the, uh, the most creative and powerful way to accomplish your goal is by visualizing the outcome of your desire, thinking about it, picturing it in your imagination. I'm here to tell you that there is absolutely nothing you've ever done in your life there's absolutely nothing that has ever come to pass in your reality without you first having seen it in your imagination. That is the truth. See, so that's what you want to do. Believe it or not, your actions, the actions that you take are going to greatly depend on your thoughts. If you think you can, you will. If you don't think you can, you won't. As a man thinketh, the Bible says, so is he. And for some of us, we can remember back to the little engine that could. I'll never forget that little, that little tiny engine. Even as I share that thought with you, I can see it in my mind. That little engine going up the hill. I remember reading that book many, many, many years ago. And that little engine was going, I think I can, I think, and it was just, uh, uh, and that, that smoke was puffing out of its stack, and it was just, 
his little cheeks on that engine were just pushed out and it was going and going and going and it finally reached the top and then it, it went over the top and man, it was smooth sailing from there. So, you know, everything that's ever come into being, as I said, was a mere thought in the beginning. Always visualize the outcomes that you want to achieve. Not the negativity, but the outcome you want to achieve. And then when you've done that, you've got to speak with conviction when you're talking about your goal. You know, instead of saying, oh, I wish I could, you know, I really want to, I hope I, I can do this, or instead of that, say, you know, I will do this, I am on my way, I'm in the process of, or whatever, but, you know, there's so much power in your words and in the repetition when you hear those things over and over and over again. You know, we, we are often told that uh, some people don't accomplish in life because they repeatedly heard when they were younger they couldn't, they wouldn't, they never would. And then they ended up, you know, uh, that was their reality. Well, it's never too late to start. And the best voice to hear is the one that comes out of, of your being. When you tell yourself, look, I can, I am, I will, because there's power in those words. So you tell yourself that you will attain your goal. And that doesn't matter, come hell or high water, you're going to do it. Because you can do anything you put your mind, see that imagination, that vision that you have in your mind, you can do anything you put your mind to because you are strong, you are capable. Hear me? See, that's what you got to tell yourself. I'm strong. I'm capable. By golly, if they can do it, I know I can do it too. So you never stop affirming yourself and you never stop working towards that goal, toward what it is you want. And for those of you that, that live by the Bible, you know the Bible that tells you, it, it tells you you can, you have the ability to do all things according to his power that works within you. And you can do so through your Savior, through your Messiah. Well, I digress. Now, also, as I, I, as I said a few slides ago, you can break down uh, bigger goals into sub-goals. You know, one of the biggest enemies of achievement is the feeling of being overwhelmed. So, okay, we got that. We understand that. So we don't want to be overwhelmed. So if we want to achieve a lofty goal, and they should be lofty, hey, you can do it. You, you have the ability. What you want to do if it's a lofty goal is try breaking it down into parts and then tackling them gradually as you go along. Not only does that uh, keep you from getting burned out, it's going to but when you set these sub goals, it's going to help you to track your progress. It's going to reaffirm. It's going to motivate you. It's going to, to propel you along the way. And uh, it's very, very highly motivational, right? Okay, so some of the, those are some of the things, the creative ways that you can incorporate that will help you to achieve your goals, okay? So now it's time for the absolute most important step. And that step is to, that's right, there it is right in front of you. It's to begin. You can have all the pieces in place. You can be all charged up inside. You can be raring to go. You can see it. You can taste it. You know you can do it. But something else happens and you never start. Something takes your attention, diverts it to something else, and it does. And you've got all of this here. It's like, oh my goodness, you, you just got to begin because there are many people that set goals with the right intentions, you know. They're super motivated on the goal setting day. They're invigorated with the possibility of what's going to happen. Oh my gosh, they're eager to get to, to start the process, but hey, for whatever reason, they're petrified of falling short. Oh, and then, you know, this voice comes up are you kidding? Are you trying? Are you fooling yourself? I mean, let's get real. Whether it's conscious or it's subconscious, what wherever that thought comes from, they're petrified of falling short. So the most important step in the entire process of the goal setting for whatever, how great or how small the goal is, is just to begin. Yep. 
you got to start the process. And when you do, it's going to increase your chances for success. Why? Because you started it. You're already in motion. It's motivating you now. So, hey, look, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of other factors that I'm going to touch on here as we go on. But I want to emphasize to you just how important it is to simply begin. So this is what you got to do. First, you're going to make a decision, right? Yeah, you're going to decide what, what your goal is going to be. Then, uh, just to review, you're going to declare it out loud. You know, you're going to hear it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to read this book. Or I'm going to make $20,000 in my business in the next three months. Or I'm going to start exercising. Whatever it is, you, you declare it out loud. I mean it. That's what you've got to do. You have to hear you talking to yourself. Then after you've done that, get a piece of paper and you get a pen, pencil, whatever. I, I you know, I know you can use the computer, but I'd rather write it down. This, this is me. I just write it down and I put it on a list and I do it as quickly as possible. I write it down. And then look, this might help you out. After you write it down, do it five times. Write it five times or six times or 10 times, but at least five times. I'm going to start exercising. I'm going to start exercising. I'm going to, there's this connect in the brain when we do that, when we start to recruit more senses. When we say it, when we write it, when we see it, it really um, edifies, it exhorts, it compels the psyche to move forward and your chances of success are greatly increased. So that's what you want to do. And then after you've done that, you know, you might consider getting on the phone or talking to three people. What three people are you going to talk to? That's right. You're going to talk to three people that are going to have like-mindedness, just like you, who are going to motivate you, who are going to agree with you, who are going to propel you to success, who are going to keep you accountable. Not those ones that are going to, oh, well, are you serious? You called, you think you're going to be able to do that? Well, I don't think, no, you don't want that, that individual on your side. As a matter, they're not on your side. But you get those individuals, at least three of them, that are going to keep you accountable and they're going to encourage you every time you talk to them, okay? And, and that's what you want to do. You want to get going with that, okay? So now, step one for your goals, you're going to take it right now, right? Right, okay, it's the time. So are you ready? Okay, so whatever your goal might be. Uh, is your goal to lose weight? Is your goal to make more money? Maybe buy a new car this year. Um, or trade in the old one for a new one. It doesn't have to be a brand new one, but a new one to you. Or you want to, um, you know, you want to pay off a debt, whatever it might be. Don't, yeah, don't listen to me. This is, this is the first step here, all right? Now that you've put it into, into motion, this is what you do not want to do. You do not want to have a backup plan don't have a plan B. Because if you have a plan B, it's going to distract you from plan A, which is to succeed. If you have a plan B, you're already providing yourself a, an escape, a distraction. You're already telling yourself that it's okay if I don't get my, my goal, because I can always fall back on this one. You don't want to fall back. You want to continue to go forward. Look, this is, this is worth its weight in gold. This is something that has helped me. I can't tell you how many times in life because I, I was hearing well-intending, good and well-intending, you know, individuals that were trying to help me along the way. And, you know, hey, you know, if plan, if plan A doesn't work, then you always got plan B to fall back. And you know what? I found it so easy in the beginning to fall back to plan B, but it was never what I wanted. It was less than what I wanted. It was easy to do. And, and I always, it, it didn't keep me motivated because I knew I had plan B. It didn't keep me, um, uh, I, I didn't have any boundaries because I had plan B. I didn't have any time constraint because I had plan B. And it, it, you know, I just had the excuses came with plan B. 
you know, many people, they, they play their goal setting too safe because they're fearful of missing the mark. And then they can excuse themselves when, when the challenge, uh, when they don't do it, um, and then they can fall back to plan B. So look, if your goal is to lose 35 pounds by the time you go on vacation, we'll say, don't have a plan B that states, you know, you want to, that you can lose 20 pounds and it's okay. That, it's, that's no good. That's, that's junk. If your goal is to make 20,000 bucks this year or within the next four months and don't settle for 19,000 because you didn't achieve your goal. You didn't work hard enough to do it. I, I call it, uh, I call it the do whatever it takes mentality. That's what you got to have. You got to have the do whatever it takes mentality. Look, if your goal is to get up, you're going to start running. Okay. All right. So you're going to get up and you're going to start running um, a mile every morning. You're going to start running a mile every morning. Okay. All right. So you, the, the, the alarm clock goes off the first day and you get up and you do it but and you make the mile and it took you 22 minutes to to do this one mile great and then tuesday comes and you know the alarm goes off and you go oh gosh you know uh, i'm i'm not going to do it today but doggone it i'm going to do it tomorrow and wednesday comes you get up and you do it but you know you you don't do the whole mile you do about three-fourths of a mile and you go you know that's that's hey at least i did something and that's the excuse you make. Well, you see, you're not really doing that stuff. You're just making excuses for yourself. What you've got to do is you've got to have that whatever it takes mentality. You have to have tunnel vision for your desired outcome. And don't let yourself stop. You don't even want to take a day off. If it means doing something every day in order to achieve it, then do it every day until you hit your goal and then there's something really important that you got to do this is what you got to do when you hit your goal you got a party like it's 1969 i'm telling you that's what you got to do that's really good advice and i and you know something i didn't pick out 1969 arbitrarily um 1969 for me and this is a personal thing it was a great year because that's the year that I was released from the 12th grade. I graduated and I partied. I mean, I was rejoicing, believe me. Yet what's, this, is what, this is the point though. You gotta celebrate your successes. Every breakthrough requires acknowledgement of your effort, right? You, you spoke to yourself all the way to get this goal done. Now when you do it, you gotta applaud yourself. I, and I'm serious. You gotta celebrate your achievement. Even if it's only going to take the dogs out for a walk, by golly, you did it. Hey, I did it. I didn't want to do it. It was raining. The dogs didn't feel like they wanted to do it, but by golly, I knew they needed to do it, and I, I needed it, and we did it. You got to make that journey filled with recognition. See, that's what you got to do. You know, on the average, this is a, this, this is a really surprising statistic that I found out when I was researching for this, but I want to quote this on the average by the age of 18 years old, you and I, everybody, we will have uh, as a, as a general rule, we will have been praised and encouraged in those 18 years over 30,000 times. Really, you know, all, think about school, think about parents, think about uh, classmates, uh, if you're on a team, uh, by a coach, uh, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, your buds, you know, your posse that you hung out with, or uh, whatever it might have been, you were encouraged by the time you were 18 years old, in, in the first 18 years of your life, on an average, we were encouraged over 30,000 times. Now listen, this is what's really amazing. Most of these 30,000 times that you were praised and encouraged, the majority happened by the time you were three years old. Yeah, I had to pause too. 
because I, I couldn't I couldn't fully grasp this. But then the longer I thought about it, yeah, you know, what did parents do? You know, when 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 your children, if you're a parent, when your kids were learning how to walk, oh good boy, good girl, oh that's so good. When they were learning how to eat, when they were learning how to walk, when they were potty trained, when they were obedient when they behaved whatever it was oh sweetheart you did so good when they were their first recital their first drawing when they brought that scribble up to you you know you couldn't make heads or tails of that scribble but here dad this is you or here mom this is a picture of you i, I made this flower for you that you you know lovingly scotch tape to the refrigerator what did you tell them oh my gosh that's awful that doesn't look like a flower you ought to be ashamed. No, you didn't do that. You praise them. You acknowledge their accomplishment, even though, you know, <laughs> it really wasn't that great. My God, to them, it was, that's, it was a wonderful moment. And that's, that's how we, that's how we made it this far because of those kinds of, uh, those kinds of praises and celebrations. Oh, we got to go out, you know, whenever you did something, you know, mommy's going to buy you a popsicle or dad's going to take you, whatever it might have been. I know you're understanding what I'm attempting to say to you, but that's what we did. We, we got praised and we got encouraged. But, you know, the sad thing is somewhere along the way, we grew up and we stopped celebrating. Isn't that a shame? See, and that's one of the most vital things you can do. You know, neglecting to celebrate your successes, literally, in actuality, in reality, can cause you to slowly and subconsciously start to take a negative view of your accomplishments. I'm telling you the truth. Because when you focus on what you haven't accomplished instead of what you have, you're less likely to stay on task and, and complete your goals. You know, the good news, though, is that celebrating your accomplishments can really boost your confidence. It can help you stave off the burnout and it can fuel you for continued successes. See, that's, you, you've got to do that. No matter how small the accomplishment, the achievement was, you got to celebrate it. Hey, even if it means, you know, I went out, I exercised today, so I'm going to go out and I'm going to get me a latte at the end of the week, or I'm going to, whatever it might be. See, so, uh, What's your first milestone that you'll, you'll be celebrating and, and how will you celebrate then? What are you going to do? You know, when you lose that 35 pounds, what are you going to, how are you going to celebrate? You know, a great way might be going out and uh, buying yourself a new outfit. Hey, it's, you, you know, you're two sizes smaller now or getting a, a new pair of shoes or signing up for, if you're running, uh, man, signing up for your first 5k, you know, race or, Oh gosh, or uh, I don't know, you know, uh, you know, uh, paying for a, a vacation now, going to a place you you've never been. Look, I've worked hard, I've earned this twenty thousand dollars. Now I'm going to take some of it, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to, we're going to go on vacation, and we're going to go to this place we haven't been and whatnot. See, you use your imagination, but what you got to do is celebrate it that's you have to acknowledge it you got to celebrate it and uh and i mean really really rejoice in all of that see so let's move on here are you looking for support you know i'm a, a huge advocate of accountability i really am that's what i try to practice with my patients i try to motivate them to be accountable for their health see i i try to do that in in not taking control of them, not making them do anything, but, but encouraging them, motivating them. You know, you look, you, you've done this, the number's coming down. Boy, continue to do this. And as we do this, you're going to get better and better and better. You know, we are all human beings. And, and actually, you know, if we're left to our own devices, typically, in most cases, we're, we're going to quit especially if the going gets tough. Oh, you know, I want to lose the weight, but uh, it's so hard to do this. And I, it, if, if, you're, if you're looking for someone that, um, that you need to help you to be accountable, 
just email us. And I'm very serious about that. I'd be more than happy to help you in any way I can to, to do that for you, to help you to achieve. And this would indeed be helping you to achieve the best performance of your life. It would be my honor. E even better yet, you know, um, get somebody that's near you if, if you have, you know, think of somebody that's it's in your inner circle, your family member, your friend or whatever. But if you can't, I'm serious. Email us, call us, and uh, share with us what it is you're attempting to do, and uh, we'll attempt to help you and support you in any way we possibly can. And remember now, you, you want to post those, uh, those goals, and you want to write them down, and you want to take that action step. Remember the acronym, the SMART, S-M-A-R-T. You want to make it specific. You want to make it manageable. You want to be accountable. You want to be reliable. And you want to have that time constraint, okay? You want to do those things. Then also, I'm going to help you here to build your goal-setting arsenal. This is what you want to do. I want to share with you some of these things that, that I have found that have been a great benefit in my life. And maybe they'll be beneficial to you too. But these may well serve you. Um, you're and help you to uh, make your goals a reality. Number one, you might consider getting a journal. Uh, and it doesn't have to be anything fancy, but what you want to do is maybe document your days, your weeks, your month. You can use a calendar, a block calendar to do that, so you can measure your progress. So in that document, on that, on that you're going to put an end date, you have a start date, and then you can see how you're progressing through. Um, you can read. Uh, there's a simple Google search that you can uh, find an overwhelming number of books you can read. And, and it's because there's nothing new under the sun. There's others that have been where you are and they have learned steps to take that have helped them to achieve their goals. And they're sharing those successes with you. Uh, one is um, Goals. It's a book by Brian Tracy. It's really good. It's called uh, How to Get Everything You Want Faster Than You Ever Thought Possible. And it's really a good book, really. And it's, a, it's an easy read, very good book. And look, if you, if you don't uh, recall what these are, you can go ahead and, and um, watch the, 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 the replay and get these titles again. Or you can contact us and we'll be more than happy to share those, uh, these titles with you. Another one was by David Schwartz, Dr. Schwartz. He, he, the Magic of Thinking Big, Acquire the Secrets of Success achieving everything you've always wanted. This is it, the magic of thinking big. No longer a small thinker, but a big one because you're gonna accomplish these goals, acquiring the secrets of success and achieving everything you've always wanted. And that's by Dr. Schwartz, David Schwartz. Another one by Bernard Roth, um, the, achievement of, the achievement habit, stop wishing, start doing, and take command of your life. I like it. The achievement habit. You're creating a new habit here where you're going to stop wishing, you're going to start doing, and you are going to take command of your life. Great, great books. Um, and, and I would recommend them here, right? So that's what you want to do. And there's a, there's a ton of goals, goal tending apps or goal setting apps, I should say, that you can get if you want. Uh, there's an app that you can download. It's called Strides, S-T-R-I-D-E-S. Another one is called Way of Life. And another one is Goals on Track. Those are apps that you can do. And, but the fourth thing you got to do, I, or I should say the most important thing, the most important resource out of all of these that I've mentioned is believing. That's the most important resource you have and it's needed. You need a belief in yourself because believe deeply that you can do this. And with belief comes expectancy, comes anticipation. That's what you want to do. You got to believe. That's your arsenal. That's, those are some of the things that you want to do. You want to get that journal, you know, and, and write it down. You want to get some of those books that I talked about, uh, you know, uh, and you can go ahead and um, and get those books. You've got to believe, and then you, you got to get going here. That's that's what you got to do. So, how are you feeling right now? Uh, I know that I've unleashed a whole lot of information on you, and you, you're probably feeling one of two ways: either you're inspired, which I hope you are, 
or you're overwhelmed and you can you can have both at the same time you can be inspired and overwhelmed that's a, that's not a bad thing because both of those feelings can be used as an incentive for you to creatively set and achieve your goals while avoiding common mistakes and listen it's never too late you're never too old you understand that it's never too late you're never too old if you have a desire, if you have that imagination, and it's a positive, you can picture yourself speaking a new language. You can picture yourself playing a new instrument or playing a new piece on an instrument. Or you can picture yourself in a, in a, in a new outfit that's two or three sizes smaller than what the one is you're wearing right now. All of those things. That's what you've got to do. You gotta, you gotta see those things, and um, because th those feelings there, as as you harness them, you're gonna be, you're gonna be able to achieve it. And setting those goals are deeply significant, and they're gonna impact your life in a lot of ways for a lot of years to come. Okay, all right. And remember, if you need any additional help, you reach out to us. You can, you can email us. You can call us. You can let you know Sue know that you watched the the presentation and you want to you want to talk to Doc about about some help in achieving some goals. Got it? Because this is only the beginning. It really is. It's only the beginning. Now, as you put these pieces together, um, it's going to help you to construct the mechanism by which you're going to be able to lay out the steps to achieve your goal. Right. So again, look, if you have any additional questions, you don't hesitate to, uh, to let us know what they might be. You email us at office at uh, pro-activewellness.com. You can call us at the office number, whatever. Just get in touch with us. We'll be more than happy to help you. See, this is what we're here for. When I say that we're committed to helping individuals achieve the best performance of their life, um, I'm serious about that. So I do want to thank you. I truly, I honestly enjoyed this time together because, um, you know, the, I, I, I just hope it's inspired you. It's, it's motivated you. And, you know, it, if, if you ever feel so moved, let me know if you, what, what your number one takeaway was from this class, what you got out of it. And, um, or if you were benefited or not benefited or whatever it might be. I'd, I'd really love to hear that. And, and, you know, if you wouldn't mind, share it with somebody else that, that maybe needs to be, be helped in, in setting their goals. Because I do want to help you, and uh, I, I am sincere when I, when I say I do want to thank you. So, again, thank you so much for allowing me to share this information with you. Until the next presentation, and uh, as always, God bless.